our singing seer here, and I had a request to do an EFT tutorial on people pleasing or codependency. Um, codependency is a learned behavior, but it is now considered an actual disease. A lot of codependents end up marrying alcoholic addicts um, because codependents are always trying to make things okay. A codependent will become like a superhuman when in crisis mode. They will be the one who will pick up all the pieces and make sure that everyone is okay. The only problem with codependents is that they feel very guilty when they say no. They get very resentful when they say yes to things that they don't really want to say yes to. They need constant outside validation um, to feel complete. They're in constant fear of abandonment, losing relationships. Um, they need to be needed and they care a lot about how others see them. These are a few signs of codependency. Um, if you grew up in a household like I did where emotions were very erratic and unpredictable, you learned how to walk on eggshells, how not to rock the boat. You even probably learned how to observe facial expressions and feel the tension in the room so that when the person, the abuser in your life who was abusing you, um, you knew exactly what would happen so when you when the abuser in your life who abused you uh, started to become very angry or abusive uh, you were able to either leave the room or calm the situation down by doing something that you think would please them that's a classic codependent um, so people pleasing codependency I'm also going to teach you something called cognitive behavioral therapy it will actually be we'll, what we'll do is we'll do a sequence of the tapping the tapping round uh, of the tapping round and then we'll do the outside of the thumb so if your hand is facing the screen like mine is it would be the outside of the thumb the outside of the index finger the outside of the middle finger skip the ring finger go to the pinky and then you're going to tap in between the ring finger and the pinky. It's called the gamut point. So then when we get to that point, as you're tapping the gamut point, you're going to close your eyes tightly, and then you're going to open your eyes and look sharp to the right, sharp to the left. You're going to roll your eyes counterclockwise. You're going to roll your eyes clockwise. You're going to sing happy birthday. <laughs> And then you're going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to end it with happy birthday again. <laughs> and then you're going to shake it out. I use happy birthday because it's very easy to remember. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's also, uh, it's also known. It, they call it a few other things. Uh, but it's been a very effective tool in rewiring the brain. And um, changing some of the more destructive patterns that you might have had growing up as a codependent. Now remember, codependents are often fearful if they live with a rageaholic, if they live with an alcoholic, um, they're afraid that they will be abandoned, um, they, will afraid, or they are afraid that they will not be able to please that person, and ultimately the fear is abandonment and rejection. But once you get through that, I'm telling you, because I've, I'm through it now, you, you, you will not live in fear. You will not feel, feel like you are walking on eggshells and you will no longer have to take responsibility for other people's emotions. That's the, that is the sign of, of um, a truly recovered codependent is that they do not take, they no longer take responsibility for other people's emotions and they strengthen and hopefully you'll strengthen and increase your relationship with God because for me I combined EFT my therapy and then turning my life and will over to God you know turning my problems over to him and the people who uh, behaved that way in my life over to God and I live a pretty free life today I'm a pretty free person so let's get started with EFT and this is how it's gonna this is how it's gonna play out even though 
I'm a constant people pleaser. I've been known to people please so much that sometimes I was even willing to lie to a person just so that they wouldn't get angry about something. But I love and accept and forgive myself completely. Even though it seems like I am constantly trying to oh, people please. I'm always concerned about what other people think. It's really frustrating and I get very resentful because sometimes I say yes when I mean no and then sometimes I say yes and I'm really angry at myself and that other person for saying yes. But I'm so afraid to speak up. So I just go along anyway, even though I don't want to. But I love and accept and forgive myself completely. Even though I sometimes people please to the point where I just tell that person what they want to hear or I avoid them or I don't speak to them or I don't say anything at all for fear that I will upset them and that they will leave my life that they will reject me and that is my greatest fear but I love and accept and forgive myself completely and anyone else who has, has learned has a uh, taught me how to behave that way and who has projected their own abandonment and fear issues onto me as a child because that's really where it comes from. So I release that and I love and accept and forgive them and myself completely. Okay, starting with the eyebrow point. All this anxiety behind people pleasing. I get very filled with anxiety when I think that I need to do something or say something that is going to displease someone and it makes me very nervous all this anxiety behind people pleasing all this anxiety all this anxiety it's just so much easier to just tell them what they want to hear than to tell them the truth because I'm so afraid of that anger collarbone, all that anxiety behind people pleasing. <sighs> it's dominated me, it's controlled my life, it controlled, I allowed it to control the decisions I made, the people I spoke to, the things that I did, and I'm sick of it, I am so sick of it. All this people pleasing. There's a little bit of a, there's a lot of satisfaction behind people pleasing because when I get that big win, when that person with whom I'm trying to please the most is happy with my actions or what I do or my decision, somehow part of me makes me feel like I'm okay and it's okay. It makes me feel good. But it's a learned behavior, and it's not okay, and I know it's not okay. And I just get very angry and resentful after I do it, mostly at myself. But I'm willing to release that on a cellular level. I'm willing to release them and turn them over to God, and turn the situations over to God. I'm not responsible for how other people feel. Not unless I hurt their feelings intentionally, but if I don't, I'm not responsible for how they feel. I can be helpful. I don't have to say yes or no right away. I can stall and give a delayed answer. I can practice healthy boundaries. But I just get so anxiety filled. I don't like change. And when I feel change coming, it scares me. Okay, we're going to start with the thumb. All this anxiety. Index finger, all this anxiety. Ring, middle finger, all this anxiety. We're going to skip the ring finger. And go to the pinky, all this anxiety. 
We're going to do the gamut point, remember, between the pinky and the ring finger. All this anxiety, close your eyes tightly, all this anxiety. Open your eyes, look sharp to the right, look sharp to the left. Roll your eyes counterclockwise, roll your eyes clockwise. Sing happy birthday. <laughs> Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. <sighs> we'll start to feel a shift and a release. Usually when you take a deep breath, it's because a major shift has taken place in your in your um, body, in your mind, and um, your body are kind of it's like your it's like your body is letting your mind know that everything is okay and everything is okay so when you do the round of I feel guilty I feel resentful I'm so angry I'm afraid I'm terrified of what will happen if I say no I'm terrified of what will happen if I say this or do that when you when you get that anxiety you use a scale of 1 to 10 and when you get that anxiety down to about 2 and you can start tapping your positive affirmation round and it'll go something like this I am safe the truth is, is that I've always been safe and I love and accept and forgive myself completely I am safe all is well and God is in charge and I turn things over to God and I know that things work out exactly the way they're supposed to this allows me to send love to myself and the person involved and I can let go and I'm willing to let go and love and accept and forgive myself I'm at peace with myself I let go of things I can't control because the truth is is that controlling another person is an absolute illusion they may seem to control a person by manipulation and anger for a short period of time but the truth is is that controlling another human is an absolute an illusion and fear is just ego and I love and accept and forgive myself completely I'm willing to let go of the ego's thoughts. The ego try, has tried to keep me safe all these years, and so I send love to my ego as well. The ego tells me what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad, and even though that too is an illusion, it has kept me feeling safe all these years but I am willing to let go of the illusion of ego because it's not real I let go, I let go, I let go and I feel God's presence all around me and I just imagine it as a pink light covering me from the top of my head all the way down to the tip of my toes and then I can imagine the pink light surrounding the person I'm thinking about from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet and then I can say thank you God for correcting the situation because I know that if I turn it over to you everything will work out exactly the way it's supposed to it doesn't have to make sense I know that I am safe and all is well I am safe the world is safe I give and receive love easily and effortlessly. I can give love and receive love in mind, body, and spirit. I can receive. To receive means to accept. So I receive love and good things from wherever they come from. They don't have to be from a specific person or place. I can start to see my cup half full and see that I'm not alone. I never will be alone. And that I am one. That I could never be separated from God's love.